All right, so <clears throat> I was on my way to leave, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get one last pump in before I get to the airport, and uh, look who I ran into, also getting his pump on. <laughs> Try and stop me. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> hey guys, Brent's doing some fitness, so I'm gonna awkwardly stand behind him. Hey. <laughs> Is this the new intro? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, same, same thing. We're just gonna, I just don't want to hold the camera. So yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. But what are you doing? Um, well, we needed to find a place to do an interview, and this was one of the quiet rooms in the hotel, and then I thought I should do some tricep extensions, because... My biceps are a little sore, so just like, you know. How many pull-ups did you end up doing? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Technically a true answer. Technically. Uh, I think if you got 20 rounds, you would have done 300. Yeah. I think I got 16 and a half rounds, so. When's the last time you did Mary? I don't think I've ever done Mary. Will you ever do it again? Um, I don't know. Probably not. I mean, like, there's... It's one thing to do a workout to get better, and it's another thing to train the characteristics of a workout to get better at it. Like you don't do Murph once a week to get better at Murph, right? You Dan Bailey found that out the hard way. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. Oh. Fact. Yeah. So. Yeah, you pick pieces of it and you do it. Yeah, you train. Right. You know, it's like if you want to be an Olympic weightlifter, you don't just max out every day. Well, unless you're in Bulgaria. Right. But. Yeah. So anyway, so so I would like you know I'll, I'll be. I mean, it's funny, those things, I, I've been training those things to get better at those things are obviously still not good enough, but like cycle speed, muscle endurance, um, with gymnastics, body weight movements has been two things I've been working on, so. So like, you can keep doing your tricep extensions. Yeah, I, so I could. Don't worry about, don't worry about me or the camera. <laughs> this is a very professional flickering light yeah, oh yeah. in a hotel gym setup. Only so the best. Only the best for my channel. Um, <laughs> So clearly this year's been a little bit of like a disappointing finish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and your performances and a lot of the workouts have been like uncharacteristic, I would say. Mm -hmm. I yeah. felt like they just weren't quite, you know, like usually yeah. you see like knocking on the door for like a top three spot in most workouts. Yeah, and yeah. I was looking at your, your scores this past weekend, it just didn't seem like that was happening. Yeah. What do you think was? Yeah, I don't know, right? Um, I mean, some of it was, yeah. I mean, I gotta go back to the drawing board, right, and have a look. Um, it's interesting, it's like, it's the only comp that that's really ever happened at, kind of. I mean, you know, the Asia field wasn't as deep, but I think I won three or four of those, four of those workouts, or the six, and even at Granite Games, I felt it was a pretty stacked field, and I won, won two workouts, second in another workout. You know, I had some, like, top finishes in workouts that were, like, in my wheelhouse, and sort of felt that, and, you know, it's interesting, like, I felt that feeling in a few of the workouts and then they didn't quite line up and there's some things there's a bunch of reasons for that man i mean part of it is i don't know you get into all those little reasons and they start sounding like excuses you know what i mean and so like i appreciate the intelligence of the viewing audiences at home but i just got i mean i got to get better some of it was performance some of it was luck but yeah i mean i i believe my, my best days are still ahead of me but I gotta prove that, right? I guess, you know. I didn't uh, really say anything there. No, no, it's good. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, listen, I wasn't expecting it to be like a woe is me moment because that's not the type yeah. of thing to ignore. Like, you've been generally pretty emotionally even keel. Even when things don't go your way, you're able to kind of process that and move along relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, I wasn't expecting you to give me like a super awesome quotable, like, everything sucks. I hate CrossFit. I'm going to like bodybuilding. Like, I wasn't expecting something. Yeah, like that. no, no. But, uh, I guess really it's like the core question is like the CrossFit Games have gone through so many changes this season. Yeah, yeah. No one knew what to expect when the game started. We didn't even know what to expect by like Sunday afternoon. We still had no idea what to expect. Yeah. It was becoming like a clear picture, but it still wasn't clear. But how do you think the changes this year have affected, you know, people's performances like from the emotional toll that the elimination schedule took on people to not knowing any of the workouts until right before to you know when they were cutting athletes and what the events ended up being like the order of events ended up being that sort of thing yeah i mean i'd say all those things didn't really affect my performance you know i mean event was announced 
I had about as much time as everyone else to prepare for it and I made like good strategies for them. And then either, you know, I performed to the best of my ability or, I, you know, I just made like little mistakes. But everyone makes little mistakes, right? The guys in the top 10 made little mistakes and they still made it past the cut. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I mean all the changes as far as like performance, it, it, it just went by really quick, right? And I don't think that that quickness really was the reason for me not making the top 10 or probably anyone else. I can't speak for everyone else, but you know, I mean, you, every year at the games is different. Every year has, you know, I mean, last year there was literally a workout that was announced as you were doing it, right? And I still did all right in that one, not as well as like maybe you could have. But yeah, man, I don't, I, I don't think like the, the, the way things shook out wasn't because of how they shook out. It was mostly my ability to, you know, I need, one, I needed to be better. Like I need to be, this needs to be better. And then two, I just, uh, you know, there, there were little things I could have done better, but that happens at every year. And that's what's kind of hard is, you know, this is as good as it's ever been. And the execution was about on par with the events I got to do that I had in previous years, you know? And so it's like, a little hard to go back to the drawing board and be like, well, you know, I, like I think I was saying before the competition, I'm like, yeah, you know, I sort of did pretty much what's worked the last three years, you know, give or take these last two months, I've been doing sort of the same thing, thinking like, well, that, that worked. Um, and then it didn't this time. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think one of the, that, that's, I, it's, it's interesting to me to hear that analysis because you're, I don't want to say more so, but certainly are a student of like the game, right? Yeah. Like you understand the history of the CrossFit games and like what is being tested and why it's being tested. And I guess like one of the things that intuitively seems different is the programming. Yeah. And I'm curious about, I don't know if any real in information will ever come to light about, you know, like last year we were lucky enough to see Dave's book and right. give us a lot of insight. Yeah. And this year, I don't know if we'll ever get probably won't get a book. That. We probably won't get a book. No. Um, but the programming seemed different. And for me, a really good example of it is like they got to the top 10 and then they did a bunch of boring stuff with the top 10. Hmm. Like not stuff that I would have expected. Yeah, I think as a fan of the sport, like, I, you know, I, I'm, there's, 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 there's a couple sides of me when I analyze like the end of the games. The most important one is just, you know, what happened to me? What do I need to do? Like very selfish questions. And then there's also my, you know, me, me analyzing it as just one of many athletes that experienced the weekend. And, you know, I, sometimes I'm, I am empathetic with the other athletes and what they got to experience. And there's, you know, examples every year of athletes that, you know, had poor experiences that weren't really of their own doing. And then, you know, you're thinking about the spectator experience in the stadium, the spectator experience at home, the vendor experience, the sponsor experience, the volunteer experience, the, you know, the event staff that are getting paid, like all those people's experiences is, and all those need to be like at the top, right? If all those are 10 out of 10s, then it's a successful event. So I, you know, I think about that and like you kind of said with the top 10, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously like, man, I wanted to be in that top 10, but as the events got released, I was kind of like, I didn't miss anything like super cool. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the spotlight clean thing was nice. Pegboard event would have been fun. You know, uh, obviously I would have done well in the swim paddle, but I feel like I've done that event before. So, you know, you didn't miss like something crazy. Like the first time they did the, like I was there for the rope climb skier and the overhead squat that progressed just like the layout of that and the intensity and like, can you hold on? Is your, are your arms going to buckle? Um, and then obviously, you know, the odd object stuff, like the snail and you're like, man, like they don't sell those. Like we don't, if I don't, if I don't get to do that at the games, like that's it. Like that was the one time, you know, we get to pull the tumbler last year or whatever that is. So I didn't feel like I got to miss on that stuff. And so I think as a fan of the sport and like empathizing with the fans that in my mind was sort of what I was expecting when they made it to the top 10. I, like I thought there'd be four events on, um, I guess it, on scoreboard there was on Saturday, Sunday. I thought Sunday was going to be like bang, 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 like four events, you know, like crazy quick changes on the yeah. floor. Um, and there was just the three. So, yeah, I was, I, I would, that was one of the things that surprised me the most. I was kind of sold on this idea of cutting to 10 because of how 
creative Castro has been in the past with mm. the athletes. And with 40 athletes, he's done some pretty wild stuff. Yeah. Like Chaos is a great example of that. Yeah, 40 people on the field for that. And I've grown to appreciate that event more. Yeah, was, that's on. very cool. The execution <laughs> of that event is probably the perfect example of like the logistics and planning and creativity yeah. coming together. Because like, I mean, I, I didn't love it when I was out there, even when I finished and it was, you know, I've, le I've learned to love it a lot more now that it's happened. I don't think it was perfect. Um, and maybe that's just me as an athlete because I, you know, I came 10th and I want to win every workout or whatever. But it, it went pretty well considering it's the first time they've tried that. And yeah, yeah, no, it, it was cool. Yeah, but, it was cool. But that's the thing, like, we didn't get that type of, like, a cool exposure to, like, the insanity that is that, that creative side of Dave Casper this year. I feel yeah, like. probably not as much. I, I, would, I would agree. Um, yeah. I think, and I mean, the part of that is maybe just the standard that we put on him and, the, you know, because it's like, the, really, for the most part, it just keeps climbing up, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, your standard sets so incredibly high. For how awesome it is and you go to it's kind of funny you know you go to a lot of competitions and your standards lower and you're like oh that was a great comp and it's like man that sucks because if that was the game you'd be like this is garbage <laughs> right <laughs> you know it is but it's true though because you go to you know you go to some sanctioned event or you watch one online you're like that was so cool that was great but if that if those same workouts run that way were at the games you would be livid because right. you're like, we expect more. Right. And that's, that's not easy to fulfill that. Yeah, absolutely. Being, I'm being empathetic, I guess, there with Dave, right? Like, he's done a good job. So yeah, he's like, set a really high standard set for himself. high standard for himself. Um, you know, in your experience from the behind the scenes aspect of things, right? You guys have been generally pretty well taken care of in the history of the mm -hmm. CrossFit Games. Yeah. How did you guys feel this year? What, were there any differences for that, like qualitatively? Um... Yeah, it was different. It definitely had a different feel to it. It felt it went by very fast. So it was four days, uh, and I suppose 2000, 2017 was was four days as well. Uh, that was the year I came fourth, or sorry, second. Um, but this one went by really quick because there was never an event announced before the event before it was finished, right? So you got there. You were told the event, you were briefed on the event, and then you basically went warmed up, and then you did it. You had enough time to strategize with your coach. You weren't like rushed from like a strategy standpoint. Everyone had, the, for the most part, had the same amount of time to prepare. Obviously, the first heat had less time, and then usually the women had more time than the men because they were second uh, for most of the weekend. And then, then you finished, and you were sometimes your cool down was maybe a little rushed. And then it was the same thing. You just kept churning through. So, for example, there's an athlete, uh, there's an athlete locker area. And no one was in there the whole weekend. So it was, it, I think it just collected dust. Because like, you, you didn't have time. You know, you were, you were just always either at a briefing or you were warming up or you were cooling down. That was kind of it. Uh, yeah. So it was just that, it, I think that was the biggest difference. I don't think it was necessarily a bad thing. But, you know, I brought, you know, stuff with me from Kelowna. I brought bags with me. I brought things that were going to help in, that, in those lull periods when you usually have this hour or two, three hours with really nothing to do. Um, maybe not quite enough time to go back to your hotel. Some people would, but I would, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to bring all this stuff and this is going to help me recover. I'm going to bring all my Pokemon games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Right. And so you know, I brought a lot of stuff, uh, and just sort of like was preparing for that. And then and that never happened to me. And I know it didn't happen. Even if you made the top 10, it just was kind of like bang, 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 Yeah. which isn't a bad thing. It's just different. So I think the athlete experience in that way was very different. And uh, I mean, for me, um, there were less events in the tennis stadium or the Coliseum, obviously. But even for the other guys, I think it probably, I think it probably felt that way a little bit. I, so, yeah. I mean, you and I have, I think at this, is this the second or third year that we have like connected for a debrief after the games are over? I'm not sure. I don't know. But we've been talking after the games pretty regularly. Right. This is not the first mm, time. Not the first time. Generally speaking, it's like a pretty positive experience. You're like, I finished second, I finished, third, yeah. I finished tied, for, I got four. Yeah, like, yeah. It's pretty positive experience, yeah. right? This time, I feel like a lot of athletes are kind of like I was looking at the elimination during during yeah. the, in the stands during the elimination. It was like people looked shell shocked. Like they just had. I think no one really expected. Maybe not no one, but a lot of people did not expect how, like 
rough that experience was going to be. Yeah. Um, how do you sort of prepare yourself for what that's going to look like in the coming years? Because obviously, oh, I'll like, never get cut again. <laughs> <laughs> but that's see, and, and that's why people were shell shocked. Is because no one thought they were going to get cut. Yeah. Like I didn't think I was going to get cut. I've never been outside the top ten at any point in a CrossFit Games the last three years. So I'm like, sweet. Like, yeah. It shouldn't be a problem. And you know, everyone else that's ever been in the top ten is like, well, I'll be in the top even if it was only one time, for like one workout. They're like, well, yeah, I'll just be at the top ten at the right time. Or it's, you know, hope is lost last, yeah. right? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, and so. <laughs> You know, and then everyone that, you know, let's say someone was perennially 20th, they're like, well, yeah, but this has been a good year. So I'm coming 10th right. this year. The, that, hope, that hope idea is, uh, is very applicable because literally every single athlete I spoke to after they got caught was like, man, the next workout would have been my workout. Yeah. Everyone and so, said that. Yeah. And, yeah so, and that's the thing, right? Like everyone's like, oh, that pegboard workout, right? They would have loved that. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, we all, like, all would have loved that. It's easy, <laughs> you know? Like I saw it and that's what I said. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, you know, oh yeah, I've been working on my clean out of uh, three, 390, 4, 405, so I don't know, I think I'm 405, but, so, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good way of preparing for it, just never get cut yeah, again. Yeah, just never get cut again. You heard it here first, folks, predicting, no, but, you know, like, I'm, I don't plan on getting cut again, and it's, um, and if I do, it's not going to be for lack of trying, but it's, I think it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm a realist and it's like, what's the, it's the expression? I've probably done it on Instagram a bunch of times, but it's like the guy who goes into war knowing he could die is the most likely to survive, right? And so, you know, there's always that possibility. Like everyone that was here this weekend wanted to make the top 10, everyone wanted to win the gold medal. They only hand out 10, they only hand out one, right? Like it's not, and it's usually not for lack of trying. It's, oh, he wanted it more. It's like, no, like he won. Like we all wanted it really We all bad. wanted it pretty bad. I, I mean, there's no way to, and even if you, there could have been someone who wanted it more, but they suck. Like, you know, there's no way of Yeah, like I want, I want the, the gold <laughs> yeah, and like. Yeah, $300,000. Yeah, that'd be awesome. In my bank account. I wanted a lot. Four months or whatever. You know, it's not, it's not four <laughs> months. It's after the drug test. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like, I want that. And there's no way to quantify wanting it. You know, and I mean, I, you know, people have played, I'm sure everyone has had an experience playing with someone who like didn't really want it, but was just better. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that's no, no, the, of course, the of people course. with the gold medals, but you know, you know, yeah, the guy you played whatever, some sport with, and you're like, man, he's just got the thing and I don't have it. That yeah. pisses me off. Yeah. And so there's not a direct correlation between how bad you want it or even how hard you train. So there's like the train, I, and I heard someone else say after the cuts, they're like, we work too hard for this. We work too hard to be cut. Like, I, you know, we put in too much, like, kind of about me and I guess the other top athletes, whatever they're cut. And I was like, mm, like, that's not how sports work. Yeah. Sorry, hon. Yeah. You know, I'm like, like literally every sport can, can punish you for bad performance yeah. as badly, if not worse than this. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a different side to this one that people are feeling that I, that I understand. And that's, um, you know, so for example, like in the March Madness tournament, you get one basketball game, you got to win. Obviously the difference with CrossFit is every event is different and the combination of them create the test of fitness, right? And so that's, that's an argument that, you know, I haven't like really dug into the minute details of the programming and blah, 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 but I, I can understand that. But when you say, we work too hard for this, it's like, no, the training doesn't owe you anything, right? You got to be better. You got to win. And I got to be better and I got to win and I got to get in the top 10. Um, and I, you can't be looking for favors from the programming, but... You know, obviously, you know, had had the events been in a different order, the the top ten that made it might have been different too. Um, would have the would have the gold gold medal people finished differently? Maybe not. So you know, depends on what the uh, what your definition of like a proper test is, what your goals are with the test. And, but I just got to be better, and so so does everyone else. Well, the the open is. It starts in like two and a half weeks. Yeah, great. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like a day, I think tomorrow. Yeah, I think tomorrow is actually <laughs> the first open announcement. No, I think it's October like 10th, 15th. Yeah, 10th, 10th yeah. is the first workout. Um, Good. What is, how, how do you turn around this quickly? I mean, you probably are feeling generally okay. <laughs> Get back to this. You know, it's funny, you're, you're recovering. I was talking to uh, someone's coach about this and they said, you know, you're recovering from the games, but you're recovering from the training for the games. 
Yeah. Right. And that's more so what you're recovering from. Uh, obviously for me, because I didn't, I did five twelfths of the games. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, so the guys who went through the games, I'd imagine their their pulling is going to just be absolutely smoked. Right, biceps, lats, upper back, even lower back. Like they did so much pulling, their grip is just going to be absolutely annihilated. So they're going to need some serious break from that. Even mine is sore, hence, you know, trying to balance it out. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're recovering from the amount of training you had to put in, and then the deload, and then to to be able to handle the games volume, you're kind of like teetering on this edge of overtraining to prepare your body for the onslaught. It's like the stress response. So you have to recover from that, and then which I don't really know exactly how long I'll do for that. And then after, and then the, sort of the next step for me is just figuring out my entire year, right? Like what sanctionals I want to go to, why do I want to go to those sanctionals? What are my sort of goals, you know, and then backtrack that and then just start working towards those, which is the open will be part of that in some capacity. And then some online qualifiers might have to be part of that or I'll get invitations. Um, but yeah, figure, figure, I mean, there's like what, 32 sanctionals? 28, I think. I think there's four more. Yeah, there might be not. They might be announcing some more. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. They're not official. Someone told me that, so I was like, oh, great. So, I think it's all. Oh, I think the four more. I think they've announced twenty four, and there are four more to be announced, or they they they're at twenty eight, and it's like they're just not gonna add in more for the season. Because as far as I know, they lock the season. Like, you'd think, yeah, maybe the four more for next year. Possibly. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I gotta figure that out. I don't. I don't really know. Uh, follow me on Instagram. You'll find out. And I'll announce yeah. when I'm going to sanctional. Yeah, you events. hear that? Sanctional event organizers. Uh, I've got a really fit Canadian from oh, here yeah. who's looking for a spot if you want to kick one out. Yeah, apparently. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess I was fit. I don't know. <laughs> that's I've got like the 23rd. Third fittest yeah. man on earth. Yeah. The, um, yeah, and it's hard too. Like, it's a, uh, I mean, I think in general, I think in general people are like this more so in the digital age. Uh, people have short term memories too, right? It's like, what have you done for me lately? You know, and so that that's hard for me because, right? Like I'm just the last couple of years I've been used to being able to say like, oh, you know, I came you know fourth in the world last year, second in the world last year, like that kind of thing has been it's been nice to say, I suppose. It's sort of this like stamp of approval, and that's been like that's like the front page of your deck. When you yeah, know, right. Like, that's usually yeah, that's usually like the and so this is you know this comp is the gold standard, and I think um, like we were talking about athlete experiences. And so, you know, I, like, we, it's funny, I looked, we looked at it the one way where, you know, you go to sanction, like, that was pretty good. If that was the games, you'd be like, that was no good. That wasn't good enough. But then you look at it in an inverse relationship. And I think some people are willing to put up with more as an athlete or like a poor experience as an athlete because it's the games. Right. Right. And so it's the gold standard. And so like the, I mean, you know, my Instagram DMs or whatever light up before during after this you know wishing good luck saying congratulations in a way that they don't at any, at any other competition right it's, it's just it's what the fans are conditioned to and the, and the athletes are conditioned to put pour their attention into this is the gold standard it's the olympics right in the same way that if you're uh in an olympic type sport let's say like the luge or whatever there's a world championship everywhere every year doesn't matter compared right. to the olympics it's like a drop in the bucket now some of these sanctionals are becoming more relevant, but it's still, it's not the same. You could win eight sanctionals this year, and if you come 23rd at the games, it doesn't really matter. I, I mean, it does. It definitely it does. does. It definitely different. does. It's, it's different. different. It's definitely different. And that could be changing. I mean, there could be a yeah. sea change down the line where the season starts factoring in, like, you know, if the sanctionals get together and they're like, hey, you know what, we're going to offer a prize pool for yeah. people who accrue Do points well, across. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and yeah, that'll change. But right, right now the game is the gold standard, and it probably should be, right? And I'm not saying it shouldn't be. But it is, and so you know, you as an athlete, that has to be part of your season, and yeah, and so so for me, it's like, what have you done for me lately? It's like, all right, I gotta like, I gotta lace up my shoes here. It doesn't feel like I get you know quite an off season, and this this whole year I've been training a lot. You know, it's been uh, haven't had a lot of fun. You know, haven't done a lot of things for myself. Well, obviously, other than this whole thing is selfish, but other than being other than selfish athletic pursuits, haven't done a lot um, for myself, and so. It's gonna have to start up again because I gotta like, you know, job interview starts tomorrow in a lot of ways. So we have to, you know, my wife and I have to figure that out so we stay sane, but also so I can, you know, put myself back on top or whatever that looks like for, you know, yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, <laughs> a little over it, but <laughs> yeah. Famous. Good luck with that, I guess. Yeah, good I know. Luck with, <laughs> good luck with like putting just like... back together. Or <laughs> 
yeah, that's based, that's kind of the feeling, man. You know, just like you know, you work, and and, and with the hard thing too is with every year you work on things, and a lot of times they don't show up, and so that's those kind of people forget too is like you're preparing for last year's games right right like you're you're looking at last year maybe the two years before that and you're like okay those are the things that matter knowing it's going to change but you're like well, what else am I going to train for yeah and so for me you know I worked on a lot of strict handstand push-ups and they actually got better um quite a bit better and so I was like man I hope these come up like I wanted to see like a heavy workout with deep strict handstand push-ups for reps and I was like excited to kind of show that off and then it was just five kipping which is fine. It wasn't a bad thing. It was just, you know, you work on specific things and sometimes they don't show up. And now in this case, some of them show up after you get cut. So it's, um, yeah, go back to the drawing board and, you know, I don't know. I'm excited for next season. Yeah, I'm too. Everyone is. I mean, yeah. people, you know, the, the fandom for the sport isn't really going anywhere. So. I think overall they're probably going to, you know, the format will stay the same. They'll make adjustments yeah. here and there. It's going to be a better product than it was this year or next year. And the yeah. iteration will continue. Until... I mean, even if it isn't, we're going to be here anyway. That's a good point. It really doesn't <laughs> matter if it's going to be better or not. We're still going to be here. <laughs> I know. I'll be here. Fix your fix your biceps, bro. Oh, uh, I know, right? You, or do more bicep work and just get more jacked. Yeah. Now's a good time. So Probably a good thing I didn't get the standard pull-ups, right? <laughs> now I'm just going to let you do that. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks for your fandom. Keep watching, Armin. There's a lot going on in this functional fitness community world. So in order to stay up to date with everything that is the fitness, follow Arm & Hammer TV on all your favorite social channels. Oh, thanks, Brett. I appreciate that. <laughs>